towards that acceleration in phase, uh, uh, acceleration phase in the of packaging is, is a, a, an important trend. So what is thermal packaging? <coughs> um, we typically have the chips on a carrier that uh, provides all the power supply and, and electrical communication uh, and, and the chips are mounted with a, a so-called C4 technology, flip chip technology on, on this carrier and then we, we have one surface available for transporting away the heat. Um, so we have a, a first thermal interface, a cap, a second thermal interface and eventually the air cooler currently and that will then be replaced by the air cooler. Uh, and the first problem, the kind of short term problem we have is that the thermal resistance of this thermal interface material team 1 and team 2 is quite high. So one could think, uh, let's co connect uh, the chip directly with a metallic heatsink. That's unfortunately not possible because there is thermal gradients in the chip uh, and the thermal expansion coefficient of the chip is very much different than of the heatsink and uh, a, a temperature difference of 20 or 30 degrees will cause the chip to crack. So it's not possible to directly mount those and have a good thermal contact to the cap, but we need a thermal interface material. And uh, in the past that uh, was causing about 50% of the thermal gradient. So this is the first topic we have to solve and we have been working on that. It's uh, a thermal interface technology that uh, relies on here small channels but uh, fabricated by micro technology in the thermal cap and that uh, these channels uh, direct the paste during the squeezing process to the right locations and in particular they direct the particles in this thermal paste so that they assemble nicely on the surface and create uh, an efficient thermal path. Um, cutting channels into uh, heat sinks is a very simple process and can be introduced into industry very quickly. So the, in order for the system to work, the channels cannot be just one size, but they need to be different. So we need large channels, a few large channels and more smaller channels. For this uh, reason, it's called a hierarchical process, hierarchical nesting channels. With these, you can create thinner bond so the thickness is causing the thermal resistance and the specific connectivity can be increased and uh, the assembly can be uh, with lower forces and faster. So that's a, uh, an important benefit. Uh, and uh, here again is uh, shown how the particles, they are conducting the heat, how they are assembled nicely on the surface uh, and uh, direct the heat towards the heat sink. Uh, if you don't do that, what happens is the particles, they all assemble on the main diagonal. Uh, that means then we have a good thermal conductivity on the main diagonal. Uh, if you're cutting a channel onto this main, main diagonal, the, the, the particle stack is actually chased around it and creates a new line. And again, on this new line, you can cut the channel. Uh, or you can do the hierarchical approach by subdividing the square from, from the top and eventually you're able to uh, nicely distribute those uh, uh, particles on the entire surface and creating better thermal contact. So a uh, uh, three times thinner bond line, three times higher specific connectivity makes about a ten times better overall performance. So that helps a lot. Uh, and if you solve that problem, we are of course facing the next problem, which is then the, the heatsink. So that, that uh, will be then in the hot seat. And uh, again, um, kind of a nice uh, comparison, uh, a typical high performance processor uh, weighs, a chip weighs about 2 grams, the transistors on the, the chip, the, so the chip is only a carrier, the transistor is about uh, uh, 10 microns thick with all the wiring, uh, they weigh about 2 milligrams and the cooler, to cool that thing, required, uh, weighs 2 kilograms. So we need a million times more mass to do the thermal management than we actually need to build the transistors. So this is a, <laughs> a strange ratio. Uh, and uh, if you're exchanging the heat carrier from air to water, uh, we have a much higher volumetric heat capacity available, 4,000 times better. And we also have a better thermal conductivity available. Uh, it's, uh, it's about a factor of 30. 
And these two differences allow to build a cooler, a liquid cooler, much smaller. 